Hi, all you Mojotonians. We're back. This is Andy Johnson from Mojotone. Um, moving on to, I believe this is part six of the Deluxe Reverb build, uh, which is going to be the board. And of course, as you can see, the, the board size is, is pretty large. It's the AB763. It incorporated, of course, the, uh, the tremolo and the uh, reverb on the same board. Um, so all the AB or AA763s and the AB763s were pretty, pretty long boards they had in there. Um, you know, like I mentioned in the last video, uh, you can tell the top and bottom because the you know the bottom if if you've never seen one of these before the bottom um, is what they call the flare side uh, or crimp side which is a small diameter crimp on the base of the actual eyelet itself on the the back side on um, the top side actually has the flange the eyelet flange that that um, you know holds it in place which is larger than the bottom so most of the time when you look at these boards you can tell you know the top and bottom just by looking at the actual construction of the board itself. Now, with the Deluxe Reverb, and I believe um, I need to get with our laser guy on this, but the I, I know by looking at this board, you wouldn't notice it right off the bat, but I know that um, this is my left side, and this is my right side just by glancing at it. And, and how we know is that we started putting these little, um, there's a 45 degree cut marks, a little tick mark. We'll see if I can get that in the picture there. When you're looking at the board, right there so I know that that's my top left and we're starting to do that with all these so there's no mistake you know when they're lasered out we don't make a mistake of which side we actually uh, you know put the eyelets in because these are done by hand they're, they're cut by laser but we put all the eyelets in by hand and uh, you know sometimes it, it was if we didn't have that there or somebody was looking we'd actually start on the wrong side so um, which is fixable you just get a, a, a drill and drill some of these out and you know of course start on the other side so all right, now, um, when I'm doing the boards uh, in classes or the kits that we do in-house, which I do a lot of, um, to keep an eyeball on, on, you know, a lot of things that are going on versus, you know, with the manuals and that we're trying to get going, and it got, everything got pushed back a couple months with the, the coronavirus thing going on, um, which is, you know, we'll get through it, everything's going to be fine, and actually gives me more time one-on-one -on -one to actually have videos of these things that we should have had a long time ago. Um, but again, um, like I said in other, vi other videos, what I like to do is I start from the, the left side of the board, the left bottom, if at all possible, but in, in this case, because it's a pretty shallow board, um, I'll start from the left and work my way over to the right. I won't solder anything in place until I start putting my jumpers on the back side of the board. Of course, you'll see those on the wiring diagram to hold those in place. Okay. Um, and again, I think I mentioned it in uh, the last video or one of the videos that had the, the chassis holes in it. Um, I'll need to drill the chassis holes, and you can do this now. You can actually line up, you know, the uh, the the backer board on the actual chassis itself and mark it from underneath where you want to drill it. But I like to wait because I don't remember 100% the traces that go behind this board. So what I'll do is I'll actually take the loaded board and put it in the chassis itself and make sure that the screws that, that penetrate through the, the fiber board itself and the, the backer board doesn't interfere with anything in the back of the board, which is a really common thing that, that people do. Um, they'll, they'll get the board together, not really thinking about it. They'll drill the, the holes and it looks good. It's perfectly straight and it's, you know, I wouldn't say center, but you know, it fits in there like it should. It's parallel with the rest of the chassis and um, they go to six screws in there when they stick it down, they don't realize that you know, a lot of these jumpers, when they stick the screw through there, it'll actually hit one of the wires and short the wires out. That takes, um, you know, if you've never built one of these before, especially Fender Reverb Amps, um, it takes a while to figure that out because there's so much going on. Um, so that, that's one thing you need to look out for. Uh, and also, the we're working on the wiring diagram for these, and um, unlike the Princeton Reverb and the Deluxe, excuse me, the Prince of Reverb and the, yeah, the Tweed Deluxe, um, which are a one-to-one -one drawing. So you can actually, you know, for beginners, you can actually lay the board on there and see your lead links. Um, what I like to do, we, we certainly include enough wire in the kits to do everything, but just in case, um, I like to add, you know, a little bit of link to it because, you know, I have yet to invent a wire stretcher uh, <laughs> in case you cut one too short. And it's a pain, especially when you get down to your bias supply and you know, your B plus and a lot of things around on the board. Um, once you get in there and you realize you're half an inch too short, well, you got to lift the board back up and get it from underneath 
Um, and that, that can just be a pain. So I always like to err on the side of, you know, too long and, and then have a bunch of little scraps left over. That way I know that the wiring is good. It's not, you know, soldered together or taped together like I've seen in some kits. And, you know, they'll, they'll start with a, a yellow 22 solid gauge wire here. And then under the board somewhere, it turns into a green wire that comes out and because they, they had it too short. So um, that's another thing I like to do. Uh, and, you know, of course, wire is cheap. It's expendable. So, you know, it, it wouldn't hurt you. To, again, we, we certainly include enough wire in the kits. Um, as I'll show when I'm doing this, I'll have enough wire. Um, but I always like to have extra. I always do. Um, just not for this, just for, you know, other builds. Because if you plan on doing this um, on a regular basis, say you're making, you know, 10 a month or even one a month you want to sell or whatever, you want to keep the little expendable stuff, you know, handy, like the, the wires and the, some of the hardware and, of course, uh, you know, just the little things that, that are common among all the amps, um, like 100K resistors, and, you know, we always have a few hanging out that, you know, in case I accidentally break or, or lose or misplace, I have one to put in, um, which, you know, when you start on these kits, um, especially the board, um, I cannot emphasize enough that before you start this, make sure that, you know, what we have in the box um, the quantities of the values that we have, you know, go along with what's actually in the box itself. And if that's a question, then of course you go to your trusty wiring diagram and you actually count things out, like 100K resistors. Okay, I know I've got you know, some done here. I got two. Let's see, there's one, two there, two there, two there, and of course there's other places. So, you know, mark that down. And if it doesn't make sense um, or you see something wrong, please, you know, contact us because we. These are, you know, I've said it a hundred times, these are uh, picked by hand. We don't have robots running around Mojo doing these. It's, it's one person that is responsible for every single kit that we go out. And last year, I believe it was uh, it was an excess of 3,000 kits. So you could imagine, um, you know, staring at the same thing every day, trying to get everything packed up. It's, it can be a little frustrating and daunting. But our error rate is like super low. It's less than one percent for all the kits. We do still make errors, but you know that's that's just part of the the you know us picking it and, and stocking all the parts and everything. So um, check that before you start. Okay. Now I'm going to pause right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load half of the board up, and I want you to see how this is done and how it should look. Um, and then I'll do the other half, and then I'll actually start on the leads. But uh, for this video, I just want to do the actual components on the board itself with no leads whatsoever, so you can see the orientation and you can see how to to you know maximize your space on the board um, by doing little things you know on on top of the board itself with the components and you know make it look really good as you're doing it because you know, there's nothing better to hand build amps. That's why people buy them because they like to look inside and say, wow, that's really cool. You know, it's a it's kind of a strange work of art you got going on there. Okay, so I'm going to pause for now, but I will be right back. 